Why is Tails so impatient? Oh, I, I wonder why. Is it because Sonic is sleeping? Let me just handle this. <clears throat> Get up, Sonic! Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's sure something. Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it is I'm the one and only Maxi here, and I am back for some more yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more Let's Play of Sonic Advance 3 for the Game Boy Advance. So last time we have managed to accomplish Route 99, and also we did manage to able to get ourselves the first Chaos Emerald, in addition with trying to able to get ourselves Ten Chow in a zone, and uh, today for this episode is the fact that we are moving on onto the second zone in this game, which appears to be Sunset Hill. Which, to be more specifically, it's almost like a sunset in variation of Green Hill Zone, which to be expected with most uh, greenish kind of environments like so. But before we uh, get into that zone, actually, uh, if you manage to hop into the forms of this dimensional ring kind of filter it, basically this actually just brings you to the forms of some sort of like a, uh, well, some sort of like a mini child garden kind of thing. And if you're trying to able to press the select button, sometimes it actually tells you the forms of how much child you actually got. So, in this case, that's, uh, once again, there are seven zones in the game, so even then, though, the next zone is obviously zone two, obviously, so that's the only thing we're about to be doing next. And also, you can able to actually head back into the previous zone, which is Route 99, if you decide if you want to do that. If, 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 if assuming if you're able to actually missing on something, to be more specifically with Charles and everything else like that, and there's also the forms of a character selecting, uh, or the character selection kind of uh, section there, which uh, basically you can able to change your uh, character along with the partner character. So for this instance, says, I'm going to be using Tails as the leader and my partner companion as Sonic. So that way we can able to do some sort of like a switcheroo. So uh, you know how it works for Tails, basically he functions the same way as how it does in Sonic Events 1 and Sonic Events 2. Like you can still fly and everything and also just utilize the tail whip and everything. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention during the forms of in the last episode is the fact that obviously Sonic plays out exactly like in the forms of Sonic Events 1 and Sonic Events 2. So everything else checks out there for the most part when it comes to likely certain characters plays out exactly like how it does in it previously. Except with the forms of the partner system, they did manage to able to just did things a little bit more unique than at that respect. So. And here we go onto Sunset Hill. As I said before, this is more accurately, it's almost like a sunset version of Green Hill Zone because I can tell for that very, very familiar music you're going to be hearing in the background, which appears to be like, oh my gosh, it's like a high pitched version of Green Hill Zone theme? That's actually kind of cool, actually. But either way though, some people might not like the high-pitched uh, version of this specific theme song, but honestly, I honestly don't mind about this at all. Even though it's certainly a lot more better than the forms of this atrocious Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis uh, soundtrack, because as far as I'm aware, that's as far as you guys can clearly know, or already noticed by now, that obviously Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis uh, tr uh, soundtrack on the Game Boy Advance is pretty terrible to be able to listen to, so uh... But I'll digress. Now you notice with this particular little uh, object right there that I seem to manage to interact in with, uh, basically it's all about the timing spring, which if you if you time it your, your uh, uh, you know, that little bounce pad for a good amount of timing, basically then you weren't able to actually get yourselves enough bounce height. So because of that though, if you do it too early, then otherwise you're not going to go higher up. So either way though, that something's worth noting for, so... Anyways, here we have ourselves another child found, so because of that though, uh, using Tails in the uh, the entirety of the child hunting is actually a, well, a recommendable thing to do, because otherwise that if you use Sonic or any anyone else for that matter, well, let's just say both uh, Tails and Cream will have an easier time trying to find the actual child, but uh, unfortunately though, if you manage to able to use either Sonic or Amy, sometimes it can be really... Uh, too much of a busy work while trying to find those Charles and all that stuff, so... Oh yeah, every once in a while though, speaking of finding Charles, um... There are any forms of some hub worlds, they do manage to able to contain one Chow to able to find, so... Yeah, something's worth noting for, so... Anyway, so that's it for, uh, Act 1, and now we move on to Act 2. 
Thankfully though, that, uh, well, as far as you might as well know it's something from the start though, is the fact that I obviously looked up on a guide, for able to actually just try to find every single chow in a game. Although, for those of you have a first time who ever experienced this game, well, be sure to recommend you look up on guide, and in, in order to able to actually just get yourselves the, not only in terms of the all 10 chow in each zone, but also just trying to able to actually just, uh, well, find them where they are. So because of that though, and hopefully you weren't able to get the special stage key, If it, assuming if you're trying to able to replay the exact same uh, levels again, but uh, usually relatively speaking, speaking of those special stage keys, sometimes they always have to be on the random spots, which even then though, that might be something worth noting for. So, uh, and also the trick system does make a return ever since in Sonic Events 2. So yeah, everything else checks out there. You can still perform a, uh, a double jump trick, or you can able to do a some sort of like a side dash kind of uh, trick. You can able to actually just to pull it off. So, uh, but I digress. And also the guard rails or the grind rails also makes a return ever since the first game and the second game most likely. Although, it actually functions quite differently because unlike in Sonic Events 1 and Sonic Events 2, that uh, you always have to jump on the actual at the end. A uh, portion of that specific uh, rail grind uh, in order to able to actually grind on rails. Well, in Sonic Events 3, you can able to jump onto whatever what grind rail you're able to hop into, and oh crap, that was the first step of the playthrough. Sometimes that can be a bit of a, well, some sort of like a uh, screwed up moment whenever you can't really see what's below you or what's above you. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of boss in this pit in this game, much like in Sonic Events 2 for sure. Although the only reason why I did manage to able to accidentally fell off to the bottomless pit is that sometimes you never know until when there's gonna be some quite a uh, few backtracking moments, especially noticeable when you, if you're trying to able to find a goddamn gel, then you probably know what to expect. But again, good good news about this is this though, is the fact that obviously you can take this game on a go, at least assuming if you're able to charge up your Game Boy Advance and all that stuff, that's the only thing. So, uh... <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got something on my throat there, I do apologize for that. So, uh, and also this game does have the voice acting, which uh, you will be able to be hearing some of these familiar voices, like uh, Dean Bristow as Dr. Eggman, and also uh, Ryan Drummond from the likes of Sonic, and you know you probably get the idea about this uh, voice cast. So, in fact, the, f the exact voice cast is actually very similar to the forms of Sonic Heroes, to be more specifically, because that's why I usually hear some of those familiar uh, voices from Sonic Heroes. So, and in fact, this is actually the last uh, Sonic game to able to feature the uh, the Sonic Adventure voice cast. So, before they moved on to uh, four kids voice actors, well, to be more specifically, when Shadow the Hedgehog came around. Although, to be fair though, that Sonic X does manage to introduce uh, the four kids voice cast, but uh, as far as video games are concerned, that uh, we didn't get the four kids voice actors until Shadow the Hedgehog came around. So, uh, yeah, that's something's a little brief history when it comes to certain voice actors here and there. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much stops it up from there. So, uh, now as you can see, I keep on grabbing those little uh, medals at the end of the levels. Well, uh, there are three different types of medals you can able to actually just to get. Like, there is the, uh, obviously the bronze medal, as well as the, uh, the silver medal, and even there is also the gold medal. Uh, to get those medals though, you have to be specifically need to be fast on any of the levels, meaning that uh, it's all about time based as opposed to uh, uh, score based. So because of that though, that, well, if you're assuming if you're trying to be fast on those levels, then if you're trying to be more super faster, then you weren't able to get yourselves a gold medal. But uh, unfortunately for the sake of this let's play so far, I didn't get a single uh, gold medal yet, but we will do eventually though, well, assuming if the actual chow hunting might be the only thing that's usually kind of slow us down a little bit, which, again, it is, uh, it does seems to be the case though, especially noticeable if you, again, if you really want to get, you know, every single QR symbols throughout the game, and especially noticeable if you're trying to see, well, obviously the best ending, along with the secret final boss. Well, be sure you need to grab all seven QR symbols, and then basically you should be good to go for that. So, but I digress. So now I just need to head back onto this particular warp ring right there, and because of that, yeah, in order to be able to unlock the curators in this game, 
Uh, much like the forms of Sonic Events 2, we always have to select Sonic. And because of that though, if you try to able to play as Tails, when if we get onto Act 3 of uh, Sunset Hill, uh, the actual unlockable character cutscene will not trigger unless if you only play as Sonic, because obviously he's the main uh, character after all, so uh, yeah, it kind of feels like a huge bummer, but let's face it, just like in Sonic Events 2, that uh, it always becomes a little bit more of a similar thing from there, so uh, anyway. So we'll just do uh, the actual Animal Capsule minigame before we get on to the forms of Act 3, and, you know, we're able to find the final three uh, Chow in uh, Sunset Hill. So, either way though, everything else will be expected by that point. So, uh, yeah, today's day is of course the 8th of April today, in this case in 2021. Um, I'm pretty sure that, uh, usually relatively speaking, is the fact that recently in the UK, that, uh, Rio the film, you know, with the one with uh, the macars and all that stuff though, with, uh, Blue and Jewel, well, that film has been out for about a decade ago now, which I can't even believe that film is now 10 years old. Seriously, why is time usually does fly, doesn't it? But, um, I'm sure they still find that film to be really, really good. And, uh, while some people think that it might not be the, uh, everyone else's cup of tea, but honestly, I don't care, because... I absolutely adore that film because of the atmosphere as well as the actual, uh, while well, the characters are so likable and even the sense of the adventure is just like exhilarating, but at least as far as to me anyway though. And um, also to top it off is the fact that, well, it's a good thing I did actually mention the forms of the Rio film that I've mentioned, well, usually because, um, unfortunately for the sake of time, that, uh, Blue Sky Studios is shutting down, so because of that, though, it's kind of sad to able to actually let that, well, Blue Sky Studios, uh, film company to shut down completely by Disney. Like, seriously, Disney can be quite greedy at times, even especially noticeable when it comes to forms of such in situations like so. But, usually, relatively speaking, that's as far as I can usually try to able to in muster for the sake of time, so, uh... You know what I mean. So anyway, let's head on to the forms of uh, Sunset Hill Act 3 now. And um, hopefully we would be able to actually just to try to find, you know what I mean, the last three Chow. Well, at least despite the fact that we've already found uh, the last two Chows so far, but now we're on to the last one. So even then though, and also that bit reminds me of so much of the forms of, uh, well, I presume that was before when uh, uh, Sonic Rush was a thing as well as well as the forms of Sonic Mania on, uh, I would say in the forms of Stardust Speedway Act 2, if I was zooming for this point correctly. So, yeah, that's actually a cool reference there, so, uh... Anyway, though, so even then, though, let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, just try to keep things moving, and, uh... Well, there's not much else I can honestly try to talk about for the actual, uh, other, uh, news or discussions or anything else like that, because... Although, to be fair, though, we only got about... Uh, 22 days left until the new Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo Switch is going to be on its way. So even then, I'm still looking forward to it though, and I'm sure that most of you may be able to be looking forward to able to actually play that game as well. So even then though, because again, it has been uh, more than 20 years since when the original game came out on the N64, which I'm very happy that the sequel to Pokemon Snap does exist. So. Along with the forms of uh, the Diamond and Pearl remake for the Nintendo Switch, and also the open world Pokemon game that usually, uh, well, it kind of reminds me of a similar vibe as in the forms of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that seems promising. So, uh, and also, um, Usually, I think that uh, what Sonic has already mentioned about this, or specifically Tiana has already mentioned about this ever since in Pokemon Snap Let's Play. Unfortunately though, that uh, the Fast and Furious 9 is going to be once again delayed, but this time it's going to be about a month delay. So, uh, nothing further away, thankfully, because obviously now with the vaccine is now going to be on its... Uh, well, it's still carry on, uh, carrying on for the sake of the majority of the country, so at least we are getting there, so, uh, but I digress. And I do apologize for the actual commentary, it gets a bit slightly off, but either way though, things get a little bit better until the future parts. Oh, there's Gamora again. So in this case, we need to beat him again, and, uh, usually, relatively speaking, you're just gonna have to keep on hitting him for about 
uh, plus to say four times or something, even though he does have his new movesets now, so because of that though, he gets a little bit tricky to dodge at times, but if you get enough hits on him, then you should be good to go by the end of Act 3, so, uh, I think it always happens to be like this until whenever we get onto the forms of an even numbered zones and somehow we got the bronze once again just because the chow hunting system can be a bit tedious. Oh, here's Knuckles. Hey, it's Knuckles. What's going on now, Sonic? Maybe you can use my help. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. He doesn't want your help because you're an idiot. What, 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 wait a second, hey! So now we can able to play as Knuckles, so it doesn't matter if he can be a leader or the partner character, so even I know, at least we're glad we can able to actually get Knuckles, but again, in order to able to get every character in the game, you have to be sure you need to be, uh, Sonic in, uh, well let's just say in Act 3 portions of, uh, you know, in certain zones. So because of that though, yeah, that's just one thing that's a little bit of a amusing thing to do, but it knows what it is, so. Anyways, before we get on to the next boss fight, we need to take care of the forms of, uh, well, the second special stage, and we can hopefully achieve the, uh, well, the second Chaos symbol as well. So, uh, but this time around though, I switched back to Tails as the leader, and my partner companion as Sonic for a while, so because of that though, yeah, the actual Chaos Emerald colors order is exactly the same, so because of that though, it's always going to be the red at the beginning, and then at the end though, it's always going to be purple at the end, so even though something's worth noting for, so uh... Yeah, you probably get the idea how this goes, so even then though. Um, and also another thing's worth noting for, I think I already mentioned about this before, that uh, this game is going to be uh, slightly longer in comparison to the forms of Sonic Events 1 and Sonic Events 2, just because of how the fact that, well, obviously we now have three acts as opposed to two acts, and also to top it off is the fact that, well, uh, it does manage to have ourselves a lot of, you know, exploration if you really want to go after all seven Chaos Emeralds, usually, relatively speaking. So, uh... Yeah, that's as far as I can say about it. And then, again, I will mention about more details about the partner system and all that stuff until later on, so even then though. But, so, uh, usually, relatively speaking, we're actually on the second zone already, so even then though, we're not exactly at the halfway point of the game yet, but we will do at some point, likely for the majority of any other uploads in Sonic Events 3, for, you know, this month in April. Oh yeah, we're now able to actually introduce ourselves these weird bullet bill looking objects, which, if you manage to able to actually just to jump on them, well, basically, you can able to actually get ourselves, uh, extra amount of rings, which, uh, again, it's something you need to recommend doing that, but there are a few, uh, a few occasions where that sometimes you really don't want to do that specific stuff, though, because until the final special stage, oh boy, that will be a lot more hellish to go through, because, uh, you know, we'll get to that until whenever we get into, uh, le well, let's just say until by the end of April and stuff like that, for, uh, the sake of the forms of the spring season, that's for sure. But I digress. So, now we got, uh, well, now we got that out of the way, and now let's go ahead and move on to the next boss fight, in terms of, uh, Sonic Events 3, and, of course, the actual, uh, Dr. Robotnik or Dr. Eggman scheme is up to, like, well, you know what I mean, so... Seriously, I really love this a variation of Green Hill Zone music. It's always been super hyper and stuff like that. Anyway, so here's the forms of the next boss fight. I'm presuming this boss fight is named is Egg Ball Number 2. And basically, you have to able to actually just utilize the actual switch to activate that, you know, that platform. And basically, every time whenever you're able to actually get into the forms of the platform, Sometimes you can have to able to hit Eggman's dome, and that way it actually deals the damage of Egg Ball number 2. Again, 8 hits and all that stuff though, so there's not much else to this boss fight. It's actually rather easy to able to deal with, especially noticeable with this nifty uh, platform that you can use while activating a switch. And uh, as long as you would take invincibility frames if you get hit, and you should able to actually deal the amount of damage to Egg Ball number 2. So, uh... 
yeah, at least there's some things worth noting for. And also, Gemmel was actually going to be on the uh, Eggman's contraptions at all times for certain uh, zones later on, so... Yeah, 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 we already know about that, Eggman. Even though that's, uh, it's kind of sad that about the fact that Dean Bristow, unfortunately, he did pass away shortly after when this game first came out, so yeah, it's kind of sad. But, at least on the other hand, though, that Mike Pollock as Dr. Eggman, best fitting voice actor for Dr. Eggman, easily the number one choice for Eggman's voice actors, of course. But there we go, that pretty much concludes Sunset Hill. So yeah, pretty nice and pretty harmless, uh, zone, despite the fact that I died in a bottomless pit, so... Anyways, I think simply to say we're gonna have to end things off at this point right here, so join me next time for more of Let's Play of Sonic Events 3. It's that we're gonna be hit onto the third zone in this game, which appears to be Ocean Base. Easily my second least favorite zone in the game, so I'll see you guys on Tuesday.